Okay guys, here we are. This is absolutely a fork in the road. If GPT-5 doesn't deliver, it's not just bad news for OpenAI, it's a shock to the whole industry. This release is the difference between bursting the bubble or proving that there was no bubble to begin with. But the question is, with so much on the line, is OpenAI ready? New details just came out that completely changed the answer. Next, researchers at Shanghai Jiao Tang University made headlines with a groundbreaking paper introducing ASI Architect, a fully automated AI research loop that autonomously came up with 106 novel neural network architectures. But this paper isn't exactly what the headlines are making it out to be, so we need to clear some things up about that as well. And finally, we have a stunning artificial gem segment today, so stick around for that at the end. Now do the thing. So GPT-5, as you know, is probably one of the most anticipated pieces of technology ever. It's the next largest step in general purpose multimodal AI models. But now we finally have some new details about the nature of this model and the timelines. The long way that GPT-5 is about to be released sometime in the next couple of weeks. Rumor has it that GPT-5 is coming out in August. This news is supposedly from OpenAI employees and some other companies who have received early access. Sam Altman also did say on X that they are releasing GPT-5 soon. And also, people have already found GPT-5 Auto and GPT-5 Reasoning within model list cache on the Mac OS app. So that's the timeline. We know it's really close, and almost certainly select companies and individuals have already received access. But the question is, what should we expect? What does GPT-5 look like? Is it a model? Is it a system? Is it an agent? And why people are afraid that GPT-5 might be a huge disappointment and crash the whole industry as the face of the movement. The fears started when Sam Altman posted this on X. We will release GPT-5 as a system that integrates a lot of our technology, including O3. A lot of people, myself included, heard that as we are just making a model router. Getting rid of the model selection list is nice, but we doubted that it would live up to the expectations of GPT-5. Recently though, during an OpenAI live stream, they painted a different picture. They sort of redefined what they meant by unifying their models. And second, of course, GPT-5. Sam telegraphed our roadmap earlier this year. We know with this space of change in AI, the model names have become quite complex to follow along with O3, O4 Mini, GPT-4, 4.1. So we're truly excited to not just make a net new great frontier model, we're also going to unify our two series. So the breakthrough of reasoning in the O series and the breakthroughs in multimodality in the GPT series will be unified and that will be uh, GPT-5 and I really hope I'll come back soon to tell you more about it. He said a frontier model that unifies the breakthroughs from their different series of models, and that's a whole new picture. First of all, let's just quickly remind you that if you are watching this video, you are not an average user. You are probably familiar with all of these different models and what makes them uniquely capable in their domain. I will go so far as saying that the average user doesn't even know the difference between ChatGPT or Claude, or how ChatGPT is the brand and GPT-4 is the underlying model. So this list is very confusing to them and unifying the capabilities into one model is a huge plus. But there is a massive difference between a model router and a frontier model that incorporates all the breakthroughs from these models and is better than them in their domains. That's the definition of generality in a sense. One model that is better than GPT 4.1 at coding, O3 at thinking, and GPT-4.0 at multimodality. That's a breakthrough that retires the previous generation. And I think that's the difference between OpenAI living up to the expectations or not. The evidence now shows that GPT-5 is likely more unified than a router. As Kevin Whale, the chief product officer at OpenAI, replied to this comment. In GPT-5, our GPT series and O series is still separate models under the hood and you are making a model router or are they going to be unified in some more substantive way? And he replied unified. So given that GPT-5 is the combination of OpenAI's best ideas and breakthroughs in recent years, what do we know about its capabilities and how does it compare to everything else? We have another insight from the information talking to the people with early access. You know, the sources that we talked to for this piece told us that GPT-5 is a step up on a lot of different domains, whether that's, you know, the hard sciences, creative writing, um, general knowledge. But yeah, one area that really stood out to them was with with coding, which has been kind of the most uh, promising and money-making application of generative AI so far. So specifically, we were told that, you know, 
not only is GPT-5 better on more academic or competitive programming tasks, but it's also better on the more you know practical pro- programming tasks that a developer might might want to do it in, in everyday life. So working with you know very large and complex code bases that have lots of old legacy code in them, for instance. And I don't know how much you value Sam Altman's own perspective on this because he's obviously not a neutral voice, but he also had some remarks about GPT-5 in his recent interview with Theo Vaughn. Hey, GPT-5 is the smartest thing. GPT-5 is smarter than us in almost every way, you know, and yet here we are. Mm. So there's like, there's something about the way the world works. There's something about this doesn't mean it's true forever, but there's something about what humans can do today that is so different. There's also something about what humans care about today that is so different than AI that I don't think the simplistic thing quite works. Mm-hmm. Now, again, by the time it's a million times smarter than us, who knows? Sam Altman has his subtle way of hyping things up, but he also has mostly delivered on his promises. This next clip is very unique in the sense that Sam Altman usually is like, today's models are really dumb. But this one that went viral on X is a bit different. This morning, I, w- I was testing our new model and I got a question. I got emailed a question that I didn't quite understand. Uh, and I put it in the model, this is GPT-5, and it answered it perfectly. And I really kind of sat back in my chair and I was just like, oh, oh man, here it is moment. And I got over it quickly. I got busy onto the next thing. But it was like, uh, I mean, it's what kind of we were talking about. I felt like useless relative to the AI and this thing that I felt like I should have been able to do and I couldn't. And it was really hard, but the AI just did it like that. Yeah. It was, it was a weird feeling. That's all we know about GPT-5 till this moment. I'm a bit more optimistic, but frankly, the expectations are so high. I'll be surprised if OpenAI manages to meet them. (music) Jiaotang University of Shanghai made headlines claiming that they have successfully automated the entire research process of AI. That's such a huge claim, and frankly, no one treated this paper with the caution that it required. Are we in the middle of an intelligence explosion right now, or should we look more into it? You've probably seen this chart. Automating research is what triggers the intelligence explosion. And this experiment demonstrates an AI system that consistently outperforms human researchers for the first time. These architectures aren't just better. They contain design decisions and patterns that humans couldn't even think of. That's why it is called the AlphaGo moment for model architecture discovery. The team has open sourced not just the system itself, but also all the 106 architectures that their AI generated, which gives us a good reason to take it seriously. Plus, it comes from one of the top universities in the world. Before getting into why this isn't exactly intelligence explosion, let's give the paper some credit and see what it has has actually managed to achieve. The system has come up with 106 state-of-the-art linear attention architectures. What is that? A standard transformer, as we talked about before, is the gold standard in quality, but it is incredibly inefficient in terms of computation and memory management. You can think of it as the most naive but accurate way of calculating relations. The main issue is the transformer attends to the relation of each token against every other token. So if you have five words, you have 5 to the power of 2, 25 relations. It's a table of n by n relations. So if you increase the number of tokens, the computation and memory requirements explode quadratically. And that limits both the training and the inference capacity. Now linear attention architecture uses a mathematical trick to solve that problem. Instead of comparing each word to every other word, it first calculates a representation of the whole sequence. You could think of it as a mathematical summary of the whole text or image. Then it compares all of the words to this summary. That means if you have five words, you get five relations. That's a linear equation that requires much less computation and memory and is able to easily scale. So why don't we just switch to linear attention right away? Because as we said, transformer is the gold standard in quality. In linear attention, some of the meaning is lost in the process of calculating that summary. And also, the probability assignment to the word that should come out at the end is less decisive. Basically, the probability distribution of what could be the next word is too smooth compared to the standard attention. Now, the game of designing linear attention architectures is trying to meet or even surpass a standard transformer quality while sacrificing as little efficiency of linear design as possible using different mathematical and architectural decisions. RKSI claims to have developed 106 architectures that surpassed 
those designed by humans. But there are some issues with the end-to-end -end AI researcher clay. First of all, if you look at the scores, all of them fall into a pretty obvious range. There is no ad lawyer with a significantly better performance. And that's more like an optimization machine than a breakthrough one. Second, the system diagram here clearly points out that RKSI searches for the best ideas in the field and builds on top of them. So while that is the case for humans too, there is no reason to believe that the system can keep improving without the human contribution, especially considering the range we talked about earlier. And finally, probably the most obvious and the most important point. We know for a fact that it is impossible for the current AI to actually comprehend the whole context within which this linear attention architecture falls. At best, the system is able to optimize for a specific function, decided by a researcher that has to himself make sense of the results and see what it means for the broader context. While it is a cool and actually useful tool, I really doubt that six months from now even a small fraction of AI researchers are replaced by RKSI. In this segment, we go through a rapid fire of some of the most interesting, mind-blowing, and some of the weirdest stuff in the world of AI. WAN 2.2 is one of the best open source video models from China, with incredibly nice features that enables directing stories in a powerful way. This one is just incredible. The use of certain words like delve that are preferred by ChatGPT has exploded after 23. And the trend continues. The study clearly shows that ChatGPT is reshaping human language. This study actually holds a lot more examples. And this is probably a self-empowering spiral that will make the next generation of AI models prefer these words even more and influence us further. AI change isn't just big, it's massive. DeepMind introduced Alpha Earth, indexing the surface of the whole planet. DeepMind literally can't stop delivering. This is how our new AI model, Alpha Earth Foundations, interprets the planet. Different colors in this map show how different parts of the world are similar in their surface conditions. So similar colors mean similar things, like two deserts, two forests. The model understands the unique patterns that distinguish any ecosystem. So it's able to use those learned patterns and quickly find matching patterns in other places in the world. This allows it to tell the difference between, say, a sandy dune on a beach and the deserts of the Sahara. It used to take months to years for scientists to accurately map the world. But with our data set, they can do it in minutes. Much like Google search has indexed the web, with Alpha Earth Foundations, we've indexed the surface of the planet. And we're making this available through Google Earth Engine for the years 2017 through 2024. Scientists and researchers can answer questions like, what animals live where? What is the footprint of human development? This technology could help scientists create better tools to tackle huge challenges, like predicting wildfires, managing our water supplies, protecting endangered ecosystems, and more. All of this a lot faster and a lot cheaper. And finally, we have the first signs of the utopian slash dystopian future. YouTube announced that they are rolling out an AI in the US to detect if users are actually under 18. It ignores the stated age and applies restrictions to users it suspects are teens. While that seems like a good thing, we already have the consequences of people getting flagged for watching too much Minecraft. Your channel might be 18 years old, but that doesn't mean you are. Sorry, the AI overlord has made his decision. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.